Shooter, stand by. You hit the radio bullseye. And the home for everything Second Amendment. Concealed carry, the latest gear, reciprocity, legislation, the right to self-protection. And it shall not be infringed. This is Eye on the Target Radio with your hosts, Rob and Amanda. Hey, guess what? Today we're going to talk about the convoluted track of rifling. How's that sound? There you go. I'm, this is all for Charlie Cook because Charlie Cook wants to hear more and more. You know, it would be a lot like Bubba Blue and his uh, shrimp thing after a couple hours, I would think. Of a- uh, hours, <laughs> minutes, somewhere in there. No, um, <laughs> folks, this is kind of an internal joke that's an external joke that one time Rob decided we were going to do a show on rifling. And and the interest of rifling, and so we did. And people... Well, it's, it's very interesting if you're into that, but there's <laughs> only like one person out of 300,000 that really care, and so... And so it was, you were definitely not <laughs> speaking to the general audience. You were speaking to a singular audience, and... Um, and so you have not gotten to live that so down. Did you know, like a Martini Henry that the that the English used, Henry was actually the guy who invented the rifling style inside of the barrel of that. So he got credit at least. His name got on it. <laughs> at least he got credit. Unlike the show where a lot of the times it's it's Amanda Suffolk's show and Rob's just along. I'm hey, like, you need to up your game. I'm just a kickstand. The, let you take a break once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> this is a prop. He told somebody that he's just the pebble to prop me up, keep me from rolling backwards. <laughs> so I don't know. That cracks me up. I mean, there's a lot of gun stuff that's very interesting. It's what question do you ask to get to the right answer on that? To I mean, start to, to start to get to it, it because funny. there was a guy this morning on Facebook and he asked about how how do you know when you're um, gun case is bad. I'm like, when your gun falls out of it. And uh, here it turns out he was actually wanting to know how long the cartridge case lasts when he loads it eight times, ten times before it starts to split or something like so, that. So Yeah, so sometimes there's different <laughs> terminology that is the same terminology that right. it has you, completely different meanings. Right, it, but it was it was funny because I uh, I answered his question and then found out that the the question was going in a completely different <laughs> direction. <laughs> let me let me rephrase the question because that one is badgering the witness, right? <laughs> Something I don't know. So what did you do this weekend? I so let me tell you what I did and then you can answer what you did. I went to a friends of NRA banquet and I went not as an attendee. I went as a helper. And man, let me tell you, when, when they say that you are a runner, you are a runner. I was <laughs> on my feet from 5 p.m. until 10.30, moving around, selling tickets, setting things up, organizing, fixing, poking, prodding, selling some more. And, and frankly, what I was doing was I was learning the games that are used to see what are popular, how they are to, structured. Uh, milk the cash out of the crowd at the NRA well, functions? To, to actually be... So that you could use it at your own function? Sort of. So <laughs> milking is probably not a correct terminology, Remember, but to ASCII maximize... is the best policy, and they, they can relate to the fact that you were milking the crowd for the last bit so of So I was cash. trying to maximize their donations. Oh, maximize their... How's that? That's, Whether that's they a, wanted the maximized or not. That very positive anyhow instead yes. of uh, milking the crowd. So. Right. So I was maximizing their donations. <laughs> what I was trying to do is Rob and I are getting ready. We are headed to Texas in a couple weeks as, as support staff for the D.C. project and the three-gun shoot that they are going to have at Reveille Ranch in Burnett, Texas. So neither Rob nor I shoot three-gun. That would include way too much running. <laughs> and and we're not runners. So but but it's entertaining, it's fun to see and um and so we're going to go and be range safety officers at the event and we're going to coordinate and put together a fundraising event on Friday night. 
And they've got some terrific, absolutely terrific prizes. And the thing is, is since DC Project, and you guys can go check them out, dcproject.info is their website. So dcproject.info is, is the site. And what they're doing is that they've got a variety of different people who have donated different things, anything from, I just heard like five minutes ago, that they have Kid Rock tickets with backstage tours. There is a, a weeks-long condo on the beach. There is a Tommy gun. There, eight pound cans of gunpowder. Right. I mean, there's just <laughs> there's just this diverse Something for everybody. This diverse group of prizes, and Rob and I's function is to um, maximize their donation potential while giving them an opportunity to win the prizes. So we wanted to do it with some fun, fun games. And and the interesting thing is is seeing how how much fun a Friends of NRA event is. And if you've not gone to one, I suggest I suggest you go. And give it a try and see what happens and take uh, take money because someone else is going to be trying to maximize yeah, if you take, their potential. If you potential. take a couple of friends and some money, everybody has a great time and, uh, oh, and money goes to a good cause. Because that money at your friend, local Friends of NRA stuff stays in the local community. So they, right. they donate that to uh, groups for children and women and um, different kinds the of The 4-H and, and, and all, just all different types of things. Things that are shooting and shooting sports related, firearms and firearms education related. So, so fifty percent of the money that's brought into the community stays in the community, and the other fifty percent then goes on a national level. So it really gets um, gets spread in in a variety of ways. But that's one of the reasons why they do it. So our guy in Ohio said, "Here, let me show you how." So he. So he was teaching me how the different raffles work and what they do and how you do them and how just just how you structure it and how you set it up and how you make sure. I mean, he spent a lot of time with me Friday evening showing me how to make sure that my audience to this event has a good time. And if you are dragging, they're bored. So you've got to keep things moving and keep things hopping, and that's really going to be our big goal is to how do how do we do it and how do we keep it going and we've got such terrific prizes at the same time so the dc project is is a um they're not a not for profit they are a, a tax 501c4 and so that's not a i think that's a taxable not for profit and I, and I think you can make donations in a non-taxable motion, but anything that they raise, any funds they earn are taxable. Something. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> but I do know that, that you can go to dcproject.info, see what it's all about, support it. If you're in a different, if whatever state you're in, you can find out who the gal is in your state. So if you want to help out directly, you can actually just contact your state rep and say, what can you do to help her? It's because every state is sending a gal to Washington, D.C. in July. To There's a rally on the Capitol steps. They're meeting their legislators. They're working with other gals as to what do they do and how do they get involved so that they're talking about constitutional carry back in their state. They're talking about faster and, and arming teachers in their state. They are talking about red flag laws and how you stop them in their state. They're talking about Pittman-Robertson money and how it gets dispersed in their state. So those are the things that they're doing and they're talking about and, and getting involved in. And so it, it really can use your support at the same time. So when somebody says, have you heard of the DC Project? Yeah, you have. Oh, well. Hey, I just burn up most of the time and I didn't even <laughs> ask you. So let's get back to what did you do? You've now got a minute to talk I, about what you did. Well, we went quick draw on Friday night and uh, some stress inoculation training, and uh, that was burned up my minute, right? So. Okay, no, you didn't. But how, what is stress inoculation One training? One of us wears a uh, rubber suit like you do in MMA from the practicing, and uh -huh. then you strap your gun on and everything. You put it you target 90 degrees from your work area. And so then the guy with the padded suit, has to try to stop me from beating the crap out of him. So I'm uh, elbows, knees, everything. And then if he falls down, that's bonus points. But from that point, then once I get sufficiently worn out, I have to stop what I'm doing and shoot the target. So 
Um, and sometimes it's multiple targets with reloads and other things. So you're, you're in this fighting mode, and all of a sudden you stop and do, let's say, a two-shot, four-shot, two-shot drill. Wow. That uh, you're not really thinking too clear, and you're huffing and puffing like a freight train. And uh, it's not your daddy's old bullseye target shooting. <laughs> no, because now you're on, <laughs> and then you're on a timer with that, right? Or right not it's, yet. It's, and it's funny because you, it's when you're fighting, and then you have to stop and go into the drawing and shooting mode, uh -huh. it's so hard to control yourself. I mean, you're, you're, you're already jacked up on adrenaline and you're huffing and puffing and, and everything. Right. And so it's, a, it's as close as you can get to actually fighting it out in the dark alley without the, with some rules applied. So do you guys take turns wearing the little suit? Yep. That's too funny. <laughs> what things, what people will do for a Friday night entertainment, <laughs> I'd rather go to the movies. Okay, you ask yourself, who is this Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition, and well, what do they do? Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition is a not-for-profit group based in Portage County, registered as a 501c3, and organized to educate about the historical intent of the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America to share knowledge, to enable citizens to accurately relate and defend aspects of the U.S. Constitution, to enhance public awareness and support for responsible gun ownership, and to emphasize firearms education for women who facilitate the transmittal of constitutional awareness and gun ownership to succeeding generations. How do they intend to do that? By talking to you all and having you talk back by hosting educational summits and events. So tune in, listen, and participate. RealizeFAC.com Your front door, your car, your gun. Safety is a habit. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. Cable locks help keep firearms secured. Learn how to get a free firearm safety kit. Visit projectchildsafe.org. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Shotgun with Charlie. I'm Charlie Cook from Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Conversations in the car about gun safety, freedoms, and even a few laughs. Yee -yee. Imagine you're in the back seat listening to an intimate chat with me and my passengers as we drive all around the country. Listen, watch, and subscribe to the Riding Shotgun with Charlie YouTube channel and podcast. Grab your friends and head to Georgia to train with The Complete Combatant. The Complete Combatant offers a unique approach to self-defense training, layering the first signs of danger, lethal versus non-lethal decisions, and even surviving the aftermath. They offer premier firearms training with a range master certified instructor and host the top minds in our industry. See the courses offered on thecompletecombatant.com. That's thecompletecombatant.com. Had a dirty day? Grunt Goat Tactical Soaps, made from fresh goat's milk and organic oils that detoxify, clean, and restore moisture to skin, will get you ready for your next adventure. These unique soaps are handcrafted in the Blue Ridge Mountains and shipped to anywhere in the U.S. Visit SillyBillyGoatFarm.com for their full line of Grunt Goat Tactical Soaps. That's SillyBillyGoatFarm.com. Ladies, ever wish you could find a brand that understood the difference between feminine and functional? A brand that didn't make you choose between looking good and looking tough? Check out OffHandGear.com, a brand designed by a gun girl slash mom that closed the gap to give you feminine, durable, functional gear. OffHandGear.com, the brand that gets you.
We all know rust is bad. To help keep rust from forming on your firearms, tools, and other ferrous-based items, you want to have rust as bad in your gun safe, toolbox, and anywhere you want to be rust-free. Rust is bad bolsters and G-strings deposit small, safe particles that coat your rust-vulnerable items. Save your valuable items with rust as bad. Go to www.iamthetargetradio.com and follow the link for more information. That's www.iamthetargetradio.com for rust is bad. questions that I was asked this week was about cowboy guns and cowboy movies and why why are they when they ride their horses are are they like beaten on the top of their gun fanning the gun but why don't you why don't you let's talk a little bit about the history of cowboy guns because I think that well some of the new because of there's so many different companies making cowboy guns mm-hmm. today, the, the Italians have a huge industry building uh, copies of the original stuff and that. Mm-hmm. Um, the, uh, it's, we've got it better today than we've ever had it. But um, like you say, back in the 50s, the cowboy movie, was, or the TV show, I right. mean, we watched The Big Valley, Paladin, Virginian, uh, Bonanza, Bonanza, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, after well, at the beginning of World War One, they stopped or World War Two, actually 1941. Colt stopped making the single action army. They uh, said that nobody was buying it. They they needed the space to make automatic pistols for the war effort and everything. So they just quit making them. Um, so that was the end of what they call the first generation gun. Um, and then they they didn't they weren't planning on tooling up and making any more. So the Germans actually were the uh, first ones to bring cowboy guns back to us. So J.P. Sauer and Sons and Great Western Arms were two of the first cowboy guns went back on the market. And actually, the Marshall Dillon had a Great Western gun in his quick draw scene at the beginning of the movie and stuff. So Great Western was a German company? Right. Actually, they were built in Germany. Great Western was an American company, but they were built by the Germans and then shipped over here for Okay, the, and they started to do that when? Um, early 50s, probably 51 or 52 Wow. Uh, Ruger come out with their single six in '53, and uh, that was uh, just in 22 caliber, and, mm-hmm. which was popular with people because bullets were expensive, and a lot of people they didn't have the extra cash to go spend money on big bullets. Also, too, since we were moving from the city to the country, um, it was a lot ch- safer for people to shoot 22s in their backyard than if all of them were shooting 45s and 357 magnums around. So that was probably a good move on his part. Okay. Um, then in 55, he came out with a 357, and f- apparently he was making plenty of money because Colt decided in 1956 that they would come back out with the uh, single action army again. So the first year of the second generation guns was 1956. Okay. And uh, those, uh, they, they went through years and years of that. I think into the 70s was when they stopped the second generation and started the third generation gun. Okay. At that point. But uh, it was uh, peer pressure, I think, is what drove them to do it. I well, mean, is it peer pressure or is it that thing where if they if they build a drugstore on the corner, then you know that on the opposite corner is going to be another competing drugstore because if he's making money, then obviously they've done the research and I just want to follow that. It could be, but I mean, that's the thing. It's cult. Uh, I don't know how they were thought back in the 50s, but today they, they're not about gun making. They're more about um, building other things that they're uh, they got a huge market, and they use Colt kind of as a banking tool more than they do a gun manufacturing thing. Hmm. Um, but the cowboy gun, I mean, when we were kids, we all wanted the quick draw and point shoot and all the stuff right. that goes on with the cowboy stuff. We all had a Wild West outfit and fringe on our jackets and stuff. And uh, uh, we can't imagine how stupid we probably looked. But well, we- I don't know. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's talk a little. Everybody wore cowboy boots, and they had fringy jackets. You're right. I had a skirt with fringe on it. Right. And a little vest. So I, I had both of those. But I can remember, I mean, not it's not too far back, but let's say <laughs> the last 10 years, last 15 years, having a conversation with one of the professional shooters for Cimarron. And he was a young guy who who was really a trick shoot. And and I don't even know if he's a trick shooter or just a trick a handler. handler. And um, he said that he wanted to be like the movies. And so he would go out in the yard 
with his gun and throw it up in the air and catch it. And he found out that he was hurting himself so badly that he then started to wear a motorcycle helmet. (laughs) So he would be in the yard in flip-flops, his gun belt, shorts, and a motorcycle helmet. And he said that's how he practiced and that's how he learned. He says, I'm sure that the neighbors thought I was just (laughs) a little bit off as that little strange kid that lives next door. (laughs) But he turned it into, he, he is very, very good at it. You know, and, and it's, it's funny set. when you look at it, I mean, Sammy Davis Jr. was fabulous at his gun handling skills, and he could do all kinds of tricks and spin the guns into mm-hmm. it. Uh, Jerry Lewis was another one that was uh, really good at the uh, handling the guns and stuff. So if you want to look like you're fumbling it in the movies, you had to know how to do it for real so that you could mess it up apparently right and, because uh, otherwise you just were a failure so you you had to be good to be to look bad right and it's funny in 1960 they started doing a quick draw competitions in las vegas and uh, the guy who was the winner at the time he had a job where he robbed the uh train i think at noon two and four o'clock at the knots of berry farm <laughs> okay so so he was so he had, they gave him a gun and all the and blanks, blanks he wanted, and he practiced just quick drawing and playing around with. And so when this, they announced this thing, he he went, and here he was the winner. But he just uh-huh. practiced again every day. For every day for <laughs> hours and hours and hours. If I'm bored, what am I going to do? <laughs> yep. I'm going to juggle so, my gun. So that's right. the thing. Is, so he got good at it eventually, and uh, I believe his name is Steel Reed. Okay. And uh, I've seen some of the videos. I think you can see them on YouTube where he, the, him and another guy, they have balloons out in front of them. They, he draws the gun, fires it, throws it to the other guy, and that guy shoots the gun and then holsters it in it, like two-fifths of a second or something like that it, for the whole thing. Wow. I mean, it, it's amazing how fast these guys are. They have that one, they have a new guy, I don't know what his name is, but he can shoot like six shots, so he just runs them off all his fingers, and it's it sounds like one long shot. that is no distinguishable difference between uh-huh. one and the other. And the, So you can shoot six shots and, and, and hit six different things, but just... And it's a, it just sounds like a wow. one long boom. I mean, for you don't even have six fingers. So so think about this as to how, how you do yeah, that. I don't know. He must, he must thumb the first one off with his one hand and then, and then follow five, it up with the others or something. Re- but, uh, yeah, okay. It's, it's funny to watch him go. And uh, you can get I, good at anything if you practice long enough. I, I just think that that's very entertaining. And it makes you go back and when you're watching the cowboy movies – you know, in the the first when you're a kid, you're watching them and you're just watching them for entertainment. And then later, you're watching what's going on in the background and you're watching the gun handling skills and you're watching. Yeah, this I can remember watching, watching them Winchester '73 and they were throwing uh, like washers in the air or something and uh-huh. shooting holes through the middle of them, and that was a uh, pretty fascinating stuff. Well, and then they're saying I'm shooting a hole through the middle of a washer, but. It's a washer, so how do you know? That's when they switch to the Coke bottles where they shoot the bottom out of a they Coke put, bottle. They put a stamp on it or something in the movie so you could see. So you could see that they were actually <laughs> doing that. Hey, when we come back, we're going to have Rick Ector from Detroit, and, and he's amazing. Grab your friends and head to Georgia to train with The Complete Combatant. The Complete Combatant offers a unique approach to self-defense training, layering the first signs of danger, lethal versus non-lethal decisions, and even surviving the aftermath. They offer premier firearms training with a range master certified instructor and host the top minds in our industry. See the courses offered on thecompletecombatant.com. That's thecompletecombatant.com. Had a dirty day? Grunt Goat Tactical Soaps, made from fresh goat's milk and organic oils that detoxify, clean, and restore moisture to skin, will get you ready for your next adventure. These unique soaps are handcrafted in the Blue Ridge Mountains and shipped to anywhere in the U.S. Visit SillyBillyGoatFarm.com for their full line of Grunt Goat Tactical Soaps. That's SillyBillyGoatFarm.com. Okay, you ask yourself, who is this Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition, and what do they do? Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition is a not-for-profit group based in Portage County, registered as a 501c3, and organized to educate about the historical intent of the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America. 
to share knowledge, to enable citizens to accurately relate and defend aspects of the U.S. Constitution, to enhance public awareness and support for responsible gun ownership, and to emphasize firearms education for women who facilitate the transmittal of constitutional awareness and gun ownership to succeeding generations. How do they intend to do that? By talking to you all and having you talk back by hosting educational summits and events. So tune in, listen, and participate. RealizeFAC.com. This is Cheryl Todd of Gun Freedom Radio, and I am proud to join Amanda Suffolk and all the 50 women, one from each state, in our grassroots efforts to protect the Second Amendment as delegates of the D.C. Project. Grassroots organizations like the D.C. Project run on donations, so please consider donating to our GoFundMe slash D.C. Project to keep the promise of freedom alive. Shotgun with Charlie. I'm Charlie Cook from Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Conversations in the car about gun safety, freedoms, and even a few laughs. Yee-hee. Imagine you're in the back seat listening to an intimate chat with me and my passengers as we drive all around the country. Listen, watch, and subscribe to the Riding Shotgun with Charlie YouTube channel and podcast. Ladies, ever wish you could find a brand that understood the difference between feminine and functional? A brand that didn't make you choose between looking good and looking tough. Check out OffHandGear.com, a brand designed by a gun girl slash mom that closed the gap to give you feminine, durable, functional gear. OffHandGear.com, the brand that gets you. Hi, this is Paul Lathrop from the Polite Society Podcast. I wanted to let you know that the show you're listening to is a proud member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. You can check out all the shows on the network by going to selfdefenseradio.net or tune in for more on Self-Defense Mondays on Karma Radio, krmaradio.com. This is Dan Perkins with your songs and stories for soldiers, Veterans Tip of the Day. If you're a veteran with a disability, are you interested in a program that could give you a free home? Homes for Our Troops is a privately funded 501c3 nonprofit organization that builds and donates specially adapted custom homes nationwide for severely injured post-9-11 veterans to enable them to rebuild their lives. These homes restore some of the freedom and independence our veterans sacrificed while defending our country and enable them to focus on their family and recovery. Since its inception in 2004, nearly 90 cents of every dollar has gone directly to the program to serve veterans. HFOT builds these homes where the veterans choose to live and continues its relationship with the veterans after the home delivery to assist them in rebuilding their lives. For more information, go to their website, www.hfotusa.org and see if you can qualify for the home of your dreams. This has been your Songs and Stories for Soldiers, Veterans Tip of the Day. Okay, we are back, and we're now just kind of hanging, waiting, because we should have Rick Ector, legally armed in Detroit, as our guest. He just called my cell phone and is going to call into the switchboard. I'm diligently watching. I'm watching and waiting, like, uh, watch pot and never <laughs> boils. And um, so, so nothing so far, but we will uh, we'll, we'll get him. And make sure that he is there, or we'll send a number to the switchboard and get them to call him in. So the, the interesting part about Rick Actor is what he was doing last Sunday in Detroit. Well, he, uh, I had heard something about 800 different um, shooters he was having. So he's teaching 800 person. women. <laughs> he's teaching 800 women how to, how to, uh, how, how to shoot. And how to how to be safe when they shoot, and I don't know why he's not calling in, man. So talk. 
Okay, well, talk. <laughs> he's a, well, he, and okay. that's the thing is, he, he had, what he did, five hundred or six hundred last year, I believe. Something was the, uh, number, and uh, so he gets a he gets some instructors to help him, and he has this thing. And I, I was kind of wondering how many of these are referrals from someone who took the class last year and think that it was a fabulous deal and you get a chance because I love going out and shooting myself. So, I mean, it's a, I don't know how many people could uh, resist the opportunity to go to the range and shoot. Well, when you look at it, okay, I've got Rick now. Hey, Rick, are are you there? Hey, I am here. Thank you for having me once again. Oh, well, thank, thanks for being a guest on here. We are huge Rick Ector fans because the things that you do. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The things that you do and the reason that you do it is just so terrific. I mean, because if you look up Rick Ector, it's Rick Ector legally armed in Detroit is, is the name uh-huh. that, he, that he goes by. So, folks, I want you to look him up. But why don't you tell them how you came about teaching, doing the single day event where you tried to build momentum and energy and safety and gun handling all together in one day? Well, many years ago, I I had already been a firearms instructor for a while. And uh, during that journey and that path, which is is a separate story in and of itself, I uh, remember seeing a news story on the local media you know, here in Detroit about a woman's body being discovered in the street. And the reason why that's so hauntingly reminiscent of of today's events is that this same story has replayed itself out several days in a row within the last couple of weeks. But uh, I saw that initial story eight years ago, and it bothered me to my core. You know, I was thinking, you know, someone could do something to at least attempt to make a difference. And uh, I, I eventually hit upon the idea, you know, that I, I'm a firearms trainer and, you know, that's what I do. And I knew some, some fellow friends who were instructors. And I said, well, hey, let's get together and let's just go to the range and let's get on social media and let's just publicize a day where women can just come and learn about guns and their role in personal protection and just shoot. And we'll have everything laid out for them. We'll have guns. We'll have ammunition. You know, we'll make arrangements with a range to take care of the range time. I mean, it's totally free. Just take it, you know, for what it's worth. You know, some guys are doing a good thing for a good reason and see who bites. And fortunately for us, you know, without this thing having, you know, a lot of fanfare and a lot of publicity, we were able to get 50 women to take us up on our offer. And uh, I was really encouraged by that. And uh, I just decided to keep going. You know, I was talking to my good friend, Ken Blanchard, who runs legally, not legally, I'm in Detroit, that's me, who runs blackmanwiththegun.com. You know, he's a, well, he's now a very good friend of mine, but then I was like, you know, a big fan and, you know, and he's my idol and he still is, but uh, I was able to network with him about it. And he came to Detroit for a, a big gun dinner I had years ago. And uh, he encouraged me. He said, man, just keep going. Just keep following that path. See where it goes. Just keep going. And uh, I did that. And the next year, the ensuing year, we had 100. And then soon that became 200 and then 400. And then we hit like 600. And last year we hit 700. This year we hit 800. You know, I was going for nine, but we came up with eight. We We got a lot of rain here in the metro Detroit area, and I think that had an impact. You know, and uh, I felt really good and encouraged by the results. And uh, I am now so emboldened that I'm going to shoot for, pardon the metaphor, I'm going to shoot for a 1,000. Next year, week after Mother's Day, I want a 1,000 women to come out to the gun range and take me up on the offer. That is amazing. So how do you, how do you do it? How many volunteer instructors do you have to be able to, go in, run the range, do the classes, you know, talk to them, do all the prep work. So how many, how big, this started with 50, uh, and how big is it now? Well, I'm still, it's still in that same ballpark neighborhood. I'd say we average throughout the day, you know, a solid four of 60 instructors. Some instructors couldn't give the whole day. Some gave part of the day. And uh, some, of course, worked the whole day. But we averaged about 60 
credential firearms trainer through, throughout the day, and it, it's literally, you know, a well-oiled machine. You know, we've had a lot of years of practice and working together and, and coming up with protocols and rules and procedures and briefings, and it pretty much, I'm not going to say it runs itself because every year, you know, there's minor tweaks that, that we employ for the following year. You know, just after the uh, last iteration of this event, just a few days ago, I was talking with a couple of key volunteers, you know, on social media, and they're already right now, already right now, they're making tweaks to the plan because in their own words, this is them talking amongst themselves, they're saying, Rick just won't stop. And you know what? He's probably really serious about doing a 1,000 women through the training program so we have to go back to the drawing board and further tweak everything from uh, arrivals to processing to, you know, delivering the lecture to engineer this thing where we can stay within our constraints. That is the resources we have to pull this event off. So, you know, they're they're looking at me as I'm not going to quit. So I'm, I'm I'm really encouraged that they're inspired to figure out ways to make it happen. So I, I'm just excited, and I can't wait to do it again next year. So when when women walk out of this class, what what comments do you get? What do you what do you get as the aftermath? You know, there is no typical response because. You know, each person that comes in is their own individual. But, uh, you know, we have, like, say, one archetype that might come through is uh, the person who had never shot before was always curious and never had someone to serve as their personal gateway at a gun range to get them involved. You know, there's a reluctance, I take it, for an interested woman just go strolling into a gun range by themselves. You know, they need a a guy to, to show them the way. And so... We get those women that come in, no hang-ups whatsoever. They're just curious and just needed, you know, just a gentle nudge. And then, of course, there's some women out there who just have, you know, just some uh, negative vibes and thoughts about guns, but uh, they went to just just try it. You know, it's like green eggs and ham. You know, Sam, I am. Just try it. Try it. You see, you might just like it. And, uh you know, to a woman, they all came, and they trust the process. They trust me. They trust the volunteers, you know, and they come. And I tell you, to a person, to a woman, you know, they all were very excited that they took part in the program. You know, they have their target silhouettes, and it has the holes in it, and they feel accomplished. And a word I kept hearing over and over again was empowered. They truly felt that this this event was worthy of their time. They're glad that they heard about it and registered in time, and they're glad that they didn't let the inclement weather, all the rain and the, and the, and the storms that we had occurring on that deck, keep them from coming out. And if it wasn't for the rain, I would have gotten my 900, but I'm not going to use that as an excuse because I should have pushed harder. I should have pushed harder. The thing, I, I mean, I've had, I've been in a couple of shoots, and he, you think about it, he's shooting four, th- well, if he's one shooting five bullets, he's shooting 4,000 shots in a day. How, how much does the equipment failure enter into some of his problems and just the uh, things that go wrong with, with the uh, stuff that you weren't planning on having any problems with? So so I think that that's well, we a, that's a had, we have, Go ahead, Rick. We haven't had many, many equipment failures in terms of the actual process. You know, true enough, every woman is shooting uh, 20 or 21 rounds of ammunition, and we are, you know, using firearms. And, of course, you know, anything that's mechanical is subject to failure. Well, you know what? We use good quality guns, and and our sponsor, our supplier, you know, he brought a lot of guns, and uh, I'm not aware of any guns breaking down, but if if we well, did Rick? have some issues, you know, we had more than enough in supply to keep us going. Okay, so I want you to hang on. Will you ha- hold on over the break and then come back? Because there's more Absolutely. questions that I've got for you. Okay, so folks, we're talking to Rick Ector, legally armed in Detroit, and we will be back. Honest citizens like you protect themselves every day. 
We talk about it every week on the Self-Defense Gun Stories podcast. Were these gun owners lucky, or did they have a plan? How should we defend the people we love? We discuss recent examples on the Self-Defense Gun Stories podcast. Put us in your pocket. Hi, I'm Janelle Westrom, owner of Davenport Guns and Davenport Shooting Club. At Davenport Guns, we do so much more than sell firearms. We advocate for increased personal safety and security, not just for you, but your whole family and community. Go to DavenportGuns.com to see our online inventory and browse videos, articles, and things we just find entertaining. Sign up for our newsletter to learn more. This is Cheryl Todd of Gun Freedom Radio, and I am proud to join Amanda Suffolk and all the 50 women, one from each state, in our grassroots efforts to protect the Second Amendment as delegates of the D.C. Project. Grassroots organizations like the D.C. Project run on donations, so please consider donating to our GoFundMe slash D.C. Project to keep the promise of freedom alive. Ladies, ever wish you could find a brand that understood the difference between feminine and functional? A brand that didn't make you choose between looking good and looking tough? Check out OffHandGear.com, a brand designed by a gun girl slash mom that closed the gap to give you feminine, durable, functional gear. OffHandGear.com, the brand that gets you. Okay, you ask yourself, who is this Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition, and well, what do they do? Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition is a not-for-profit group based in Portage County, registered as a 501c3, and organized to educate about the historical intent of the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America to share knowledge, to enable citizens to accurately relate and defend aspects of the U.S. Constitution, to enhance public awareness and support for responsible gun ownership, and to emphasize firearms education for women who facilitate the transmittal of constitutional awareness and gun ownership to succeeding generations. How do they intend to do that? By talking to you all and having you talk back by hosting educational summits and events. So tune in, listen, and participate. RealizeFAC.com Shotgun with Charlie I'm Charlie Cook from Riding Shotgun with Charlie. Conversations in the car about gun safety, freedoms, and even a few laughs. Imagine you're in the back seat listening to an intimate chat with me and my passengers as we drive all around the country. Listen, watch, and subscribe to the Riding Shotgun with Charlie YouTube channel and podcast. Had a dirty day? Grunt Goat Tactical Soaps, made from fresh goat's milk and organic oils that detoxify, clean, and restore moisture to skin, will get you ready for your next adventure. These unique soaps are handcrafted in the Blue Ridge Mountains and shipped to anywhere in the U.S. Visit SillyBillyGoatFarm.com for their full line of Grunt Goat Tactical Soaps. That's SillyBillyGoatFarm.com. Hey, continuing our interview with Rick Ector, legally armed in Detroit, and the phenomenal, phenomenal things that Rick has managed to accomplish last Sunday. So, Rick, when you had... Rick, are you there? Oh, no. I think we lost him. When, when I get the music, that says we don't have, <laughs> we don't have him. So, uh, Okay. Um, we're going to, we're going to continue on and then we will, uh, we'll tell him to call back in. So, um, so there's that. So, so anyhow, <laughs> yeah, we, we were figuring with the, uh, with 21 shots a piece that, that comes out to like 16,800 bullets in a, in one day's time. Yeah. That's so, a, that's a lot of ammo one way or the other. And, uh, I have questions. I want to know, I want to know what, what guns did he use? 
Do they I, have to clean them in the middle of the day or something? I heard that, that he had Eric Pratt there from Gun Owners of America. So I want to know what he had to say. And I want to know who, who helped him with the ammo cost. I want to help know who helped him with the target cost. I mean, think about it. 800, 800 targets, 800 earplugs, 800 glasses, 800... It, the, the scale yeah, the, of this... The amount of range space that he had to have to get them through. Because how long does it take you to shoot 20 shots, it, especially if you have almost no training or no skills at all? I'm telling you. So, Rick, we started without you. We have questions. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of questions. And I have answers. <laughs> okay. So let's start with what guns? What guns did you guys shoot? Uh, there were quite a few guns that, that were there. There weren't many uh-huh. variations. You know, Glock Model 17 was probably the most prevalent one in use that day. Okay. So a Glock 17 is what caliber? 22? 9 millimeter? Nine, okay. well, 9 millimeter was the caliber that I had initially settled upon when I initially designed okay. this program. Uh-huh. You know, if when you look at program design, you know, I could have went with a lot of different calibers and just further, you know, made this whole event complex and difficult from a supply management standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so I figured for the sake of, uh, you know, making it simple, you know, keep it simple, just go with nine millimeters seems to be the minimum defensive caliber and uh, the ammunition during most years is plentiful. Okay. So now you had 16, you needed 16,800 rounds if everybody shot 20 rounds. So what yes. or twenty one rounds? So tell me, how how did you how did you pay for, or how did you get sponsors for, or did was it did everybody just mail you a box of ammo? How did you get enough ammo to be able to do this? <laughs> you know, you know, if I had that many people, you know, see singly send me a box of fifty or hundred rounds of ammo, that would be a management project all in of itself. You know, fortunately for me, you know, I'm, I'm fairly active in the gun rights community here back home in Metro Detroit and Michigan. And uh, a lot of people believe in the project and they believe in, in the organization. They believe in what we're doing. And I'll tell you, uh, Phoenix, F-E-N-I-X, ammo, you know, Justin Kazaroff, he came through with 7,000 rounds. Doug Holloway of of uh, Michigan gun owners came through with 7,000 rounds. A couple of fellow firearms trainers, Jewel Fulton, 2,000, and and, uh, Michigan Open Carry Gun Rights Group here, 2,000 rounds. Michigan Ammo, you know, they came through with 2,000 rounds. Uh, uh, Skip Coriel, you probably know that guy, 1,000 rounds. And, I mean, it's just been a community effort to band together and, and supply the ammunition. So luckily I had Doug, who also donated some ammo. Doug Holloway came through and was the supplier of the guns. And, of course, the gun range. You know, the gun range, you know, donated the use of their facility, you know, free of charge. And so I'm totally committed, you know, to those guys, too. So, I mean, it was just awesome. That is, that is amazing. And when a community comes together like that, it it is is it's great. It's so I hear that you had Eric Pratt from Gun Owners of America in and came into town for this event, right? Did I hear right? Yes, he, he definitely yes, he was definitely there. And you know what? Every woman that was there got this beautiful hat with the GOA logo on it. The thing was depending on where we were in the boxes in terms of distributing them or determine what color they got, whether they got the hot pink or the straight pink or they got white. You know, it just depended on which box we were on. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I want to give it up give it up to Eric for uh, sending that out to us. You know, I met him years ago when I did my very first uh, event of this nature here in Detroit. It was actually his dad that was supposed to be my keynote speaker at this uh, function that I was doing uh, Mm -hmm. tied into, you know, the weekend of training women. And uh, he came in his dad's place and his dad fell ill, you know, right before the deadline. And uh, Eric and I remained friends, you know, throughout the years. And as a matter of fact, we were just uh, conversing at the last NRA meeting, you know, just literally weeks ago. 
Mm-hmm. And that's when we had some discussions about working together for this ladies' weekend, and he came through big time with these boxes upon boxes of, of hats with the GOA logo on it. So I'm going to give it up to the Gun Owners of America and my friend Eric Pratt for coming through with coming through for us. That is pretty amazing. Now let's go on to what happens next. You've Now that you've had years and years of doing this, how many women then do you think reaches out? How many women come back the next year because they did it and so then the next year they bring somebody else? You know, you tell two friends kind of thing. That happens a lot. I haven't tracked it down to, you know, a percentage. But, mm-hmm. you know, I have some women that have come every single year. I have some that will go a year and take a year or two off and then come back. But when they come back, they always bring someone else with them, a friend or a family mm-hmm. member. So it's a thing that really is self, uh, self-fulfilling. self It's, like, very cyclical in nature in terms of attendance. You know, there are some women who come and they think, well, gee, you know, I've already had a benefit of the program. I don't want to take up a spot when someone else could be, you know, the beneficiary of this experience and they don't come. But I'll tell you, every single person, when they leave, they're very happy that they came. Mm-hmm. And it, you look at all the the transformations in terms of, of their of their attitudes and their smiles and expressions and their body language. It's just a beautiful program and a great sight to behold. So anecdotally, what have you heard from them about about them getting their concealed carry licenses or reaching out to you as a trainer or the other trainers that are in the room or, or you know, just to get additional training? So, so what seed have you planted that you've now seen some garden grow from it? Well, you know, definitely in years past, you know, trainers who have worked the event have had some positive feedback in terms of the women that they work with actually follow up with them specifically, you know, for actual training. I mean, Mm -hmm. if a woman is curious about training and you're working one-on-one with a trainer in the booth, then I can't think of a greater icebreaker than actually have had an experience working together to punch holes in paper. You know, I've had anecdotally some some women come and and contact me, but I tell them all, you know, all the trainers, I can't think of a better way to get students than to actually be there and be the person supplying them with a free shooting lesson. And it's not always just women who don't have any – you know, any experiences at all with guns. There are plenty of women who, like men, you know, don't practice as much as they should. And so they come and they get their practice in and they say, okay, you know, glad I went. I was a little rusty. And you know what? I need to contact and reach out to someone to get, you know, back up to speed with improved accuracy like I feel that I should have. So actually having someone that you're familiar with, it's a great bonus and it works in their favor. Oh, I, and I think I think you're right. I mean, think about it. Women go to the bathroom together. So so just having the fact that you get an invite to go to the range, we're all going together. So, Rick, we're right up at the top of the hour, and I want to say thank you very much. So, folks, look up Rick Ector, legally armed in Detroit, because he is doing fantastic things in Detroit, and he's going to be continue to do them. We want to hear from you next year when you hit the 1,000 people. So thanks, Rick. Okay, you ask yourself, who is this Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition, and what do they do? Realize Firearms Awareness Coalition is a not-for-profit group based in Portage County, registered as a 501c3, and organized to educate about the historical intent of the Second Amendment to the Constitution of the United States of America to share knowledge, to enable citizens to accurately relate and defend aspects of the U.S. Constitution, to enhance public awareness and support for responsible gun ownership, and to emphasize firearms education for women who facilitate the transmittal of constitutional awareness and gun ownership to succeeding generations. How do they intend to do that? By talking to you all and having you talk back by hosting educational summits and events. So tune in, listen, and participate. RealizeFAC.com.